Good morning, everybody. Orin J here with another Echoes of Mana video, and today we're going to talk about two and three star memory gems in this game because you probably have relaxed a couple things by now. One, four star memory gems are going to be really good, and two, you probably don't have very many because if you're like me, you have a couple, but you don't really have duplicates yet. And so, if you're wanting to power up in the meantime, there are some really, really good two star memory gems and some borderline OP three star memory gems that we can invest in right now to power up our account. I'm going to give you my top 10 list of two and three star memory gems right now. Uh, but first, I do want to mention something. This Friday, I'm going to do my first Echoes of Mana live stream, and it's actually a sponsored stream. It's going to be this Friday on my YouTube channel at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 3 p.m. Pacific Time, and I'm going to be joined by another content creator, Meet Me on Mars, as a co-host. It's going to be so much fun. I'm going to buy all these energy pots in the shop for that stream so I can host multi-rooms. We might do a poll or two. We're going to talk about tier lists. Like, if you want to come hang out, join some multi-rooms, rooms on stream this Friday on my YouTube channel, 6 p.m. Eastern. Come hang out. It's going to be fun, and I'm really excited. Like, not having access to energy packs has kind of held me back from streaming the game, I felt like. So now I have some pots, and uh, we're going to stream the game. Okay, let's get to the top 10 list, though. And I'm going to start with an honorable mention, and it's going to be about two cards. I just want you guys to know there are three-star cards in this game that boost experience gained and lucre gained. Now, this will actually max out at plus 5% if you have um, dupes of it to max out. I don't love the EXP gained one so much, but I think the lucre up one is probably worth investing in. Like, don't for... Don't sleep on how effective this card can be, especially as we get towards the end game and we figure out how rare, how hard to get a bunch of lucre is. I like this card a lot, but I'm not putting it on my top 10 list because it doesn't like directly power up your account when it's being used in a party. It's more for farming, but I did want you to know that it's out there. Now, to the list, the 10, 9, and 8 spots, right? The bottom three, I'm going to give those over to some two-star cards, and really in no particular order. Um, let's start here with Sea Moon, and Sea Moon is a just flat damage taken minus 15%. I think this is valuable, especially if you're playing by yourself and you're relying on the AI to just not die. A flat 15% damage reduction as an Aegis skill is very useful, and as I go through this video, so much of my uh, top 10 list here is going to be based Based on how how good is the Aegis skill, right? Like what buff are you getting from this card and how generically applicable is it? So like damage taken minus 15%, anybody can wear that and it's going to be particularly good with the AI. So I like Sea Moon a lot. As a two star card, you're going to get a lot of dupes of it pretty quickly worth investing in and i do like how it's an int based card like the top two stats on this card are int and spirit and you know if you were to level it you will catch those other stats but it's like they understand that our int based users in this game have staffs and go up and start whacking stuff and that can be detrimental to their health so here's a damage taken little uh less you know a little less damage taken buff i like sea moon a lot Okay, another two-star card that I think is very worth mentioning that's going to make me scroll every single time, isn't it? Is this old guy right here, uh, Chiba. So, Chiba is a magic, a mega spirit magic damage buff. And if you are to fully awaken this card, it is actually plus 25%. Now, this is your hardest hitting skill more than likely, right? Is your summon, the mega spirit magic. That means summon. So, if your hardest hitting move can be boosted by 25% damage, that's a that's that's non insignificant, right? The main stats on this card are int and MP. I like this again, especially for casters. More MP is a good thing. As you level it, uh, the int will continue to go up. You'll catch other stats, but increasing the MP on your unit is a nice little buff. And whoever's running this, getting a plus 25% boost to your summon to your MS. At MSM. Oh my gosh, maybe I'll just call it MSM. Mega Spirit Magic Damage. I think that's valuable, and I really like this card. And then I had one more that I wrote down here for a two star card to make the top 10, and that's Pelican. So let's take a peek at Pelican here. It is just a skill damage buff. And if you are to fully unleash this thing, it's skill damage plus 20%. It's not locked to an element, it's not locked to a 
you know, like specific weapon type. It's just any skill you're using plus 20% damage. Characters like Reese, characters like mages who are using their skills all the time. This could be a big damage spike to them. Main stat on this card is strength and con, so it's going to be more in line for like a Reese or maybe like a Duran, somebody like that. But as you level it, you will catch um, most of the rest of the stats. It does not come with MP or luck, but as a strength based card, skill damage up, this is nice. If you're investing into any three of those two-star cards, I don't think that's a mistake. They're easier to level, easier to max than any other cards in the game. And so I will let those three sneak into my top 10 of this like value level list. Okay, now let's get to the three-star cards next. I'm going to try to give more value to cards that are generically applicable, right? Not locked to a single element, not locked to like maybe only being good for one character. An exception is my card that comes in at number seven. And this card is a really big jump. And I feel like an idiot for pronouncing that the way it is. I'm just going to call it a really big jump. Um, honestly, in Trials of Mana, Charlotte was like a character I didn't like as much because when she spoke in English, I just couldn't stand her voice. Like, I get that a lot of people like her in this game. And that she's really useful as like a healer and i'm giving her a nod here i think it's a three-star unit charlotte is super valuable um and maybe she lacks a little bit of damage in her kit so this is a card for for people who are leveling charlotte to get a three-star healer and it buffs mega spirit magic damage again it's a bigger buff like as you unlock it it scales up it actually maxes at plus 30 percent so a unit like charlotte who you might just be bringing for a healer if you can buff her summon damage to plus 30 percent or whatever even at none it's still plus 20 percent this adds a little bit of damage to her the stats on the card are good for her you can see it's a main int and mp card i love stuff that gives you more magic more mp in this game is super valuable and as you max it you gain more stats i this card sneaks into the top 10 in part because it's a really good card um even though it's locked to light element units, Charlotte is a great three-star light unit. So I'm going to let that one slip into the top 10. I'll put it at number seven. I'll put it at number seven. Okay, next up, number six. This is going to be Seekers. Now, this card is when targeted, damage taken minus 20%. This is definitely a manual play card and meant for some of the harder content in the game. As you skill this up, the damage taken buff will increase. It maxes out at plus 30%, but with just one duplicate, you can get it to minus 25. So if you're playing a character, and remember bosses in this game like to target the character you're playing. Heck, mobs in this game like to target the character that the player is controlling. Getting an up to 30% damage reduction buff on that character, for, especially for these hard boss fights where they're like zipping around the map in some cases, you're trying to survive, 30% more effective HP is a big deal. I like this card a lot. Stats on this card, it's a base strength and luck card. This will help your damage significantly as a physical damage dealer. More strength is going to help you do more damage and then more luck is going to help you crit harder and you can see the rest of the stats do start to scale up as you level the card. So Seekers of Mana, that's coming in at number six on my list. I have a little notepad that I like write all this down on. So that's what I'm referencing here. And boom, there we go, Seekers of Mana. Okay, next up, this is Set Off for Adventure. Um, I accidentally leveled this card too much. I tried to level them in order. I level this one too much. Anyway, this is recovery amount 30%. Now look, I know a lot of y'all out there like to play your units that can heal a little bit or like to play your certain units that when they do their special move, they heal themselves. This is a great card for them. Um, I think a lot of people are confused about what the buff on this card does. It actually goes all the way up to 50%. Like if you have enough dupes, you can unlock this thing to plus 50% healing received. That's what this means, healing received. So your unit that's out there beating on the mob, like Shilohs of the world, Sumos of the world, they're out there, you're playing them, they're taking damage, they can heal themselves. Getting plus 50% more healing, that's good. I like this card a lot. A special other like thing to note about this card is this is obtainable by just clearing chapter one. As you play through the game, you're going to get this card. So not hard to get, has a nice buff on it. If you look at the stats, you can kind of see who it's for. Main stat, strength, HP, and then scales up to a significant amount of strength and HP. Would have liked some MP or luck on it as well. 
not going to get that, but I will put um, set off on adventure as number five. Okay, number four, we are going to go with tree chat. Now, this is just one of a set of cards. I'm using tree chat as the example, but there is actually a card for slash, blunt, and uh, pierce, like all the damage types have one of these cards. So this one is magic damage plus 8%. I don't have any dupes, but as you scale it up, it maxes actually at plus 10%. And then there's blunt, I wrote it down, blunt, pierce, and slash. So every kind of damage type in the game, like a sword does slashing damage, right? So that's your basic attack, that's also your skills. You can increase that damage by just a flat 10%. Um, so Tree Chat is the magic damage example of those cards, but whichever one that you want to build, that's just nice. Flat more damage is good, and then each of them scales appropriately. This is the magic damage one, so you can see main stat is int, and it scales up from there. Again, would have liked to have seen MP on this, but as a three-star card that can boost your damage by 10%, I dig it, that's pretty nice. And it starts at plus eight. That's kind of another little bonus here, is yes, you do want to still un um, up, or you still want to unleash it, because that's gonna give you access to more stats, but the Aegis skill itself does not improve dramatically. So plus eight percent damage boost is nice. I think it's good. As a three star card, if you're looking for more damage, I like those. Um, okay, next up, we've got uh, the Fairy Boss, oh yes. Number three on the list, we've got Briarborough Fairy Boss. This is while field inactive, recover MP plus 10 every 15 seconds. As you level this up, it will eventually get to plus 15 MP recovery every 10 seconds. Now, this is a very specific situation card, but generically good for all characters in this situation. As you're, as you're progressing through this game, if you're playing any mages, one thing you will notice is you'll run out of mana on these longer boss fights, right? Like you can take your Angela out there or your um, Popoy out there and just drop all their spells. You can stay at range, kite the boss around and be like, ice drop, ice drop, ice drop. Eventually you run out of mana. What do you do in that case? Well, you can just switch to another character, let the AI run in there and just auto die while Angela whoops on him. Or you can run a second mage in the support job and have this card on them. So you have Angela, she's equipped with this card. You pull her out of the group after she's used up all her mana and she sits there and regenerates mana every 10 seconds. That's good. You'll get six ticks of that in in a minute at plus 15. What is that, like 90 more mana? She can come in, drop some more spells. I think this card has a like a really good potential in the end game for double mages. So I'm bringing it in here at number three as a worthy investment. Now keep in mind, there are cards that also have these effects as four star cards. I am not saying that these are the best 10, you know, I keep calling them cards. They're the best 10 memory gems in the game. I'm saying these are the best three and two stars in my opinion in the game. Obviously, if you have the four star card and you especially if you have it upgraded, replace the three star version with the four star version. Okay, number two. Number two is a branch bestowed. So here we go. This is just a flat damage taken resist down, right? Now it upgrades. I wish I had more duplicates of this because I would definitely run it, but it starts at minus 15% and it caps at minus 20%. The thing I like about this here, even though the uh, damage reduction buff on the win targeted card caps at 30%, which is higher, this is one you can give to your units you're not controlling. And being able to give the units you're not controlling a damage resistance buff, I mean, y'all have played with the AI in this game, right? It seems pretty good. And once again, look, it's an int card. It's like they know. It's like they know that the AI is going to try to run out there and die. So I think this card is very powerful, especially if you're just like close to clearing something but gosh your teammates just kind of keep dying a little bit especially if they're mages and especially if you need to swap off of playing the manual giving them a damage taken resistance buff is nice and you can see it has a big chunk of intelligence on it so for your mages i think this is a decent investment if you need them to live a little bit longer okay last but not least the most op three star card maybe the most op card in the game i don't know memory gem memory gem they're called memory gems not cards it's this one, it's the little things. We got the little cactus here. Now, look at this. On damage taken, ST gauge plus 
I regrettably do not have any duplicates of this card. If I did, I would have it maxed out. It maxes at plus 10%. Let me explain this. So, every instance of you taking damage, if a boss drops a 5 hit combo on you, and you have this maxed, you will re regenerate 50% of your special technique get bar. Um, if you're playing like Duran and you're up there, like you got your special armor on or your super armor on, and you're just like face tanking a boss and you're wailing on him and he's wailing on you, how nice would it be to like every like four or five seconds be like, oh, special technique, oh, special technique, oh, you charge up my bar, boom, take my big hit. Uh, yeah, that seems really nice. That seems really good. Charging your special technique bar up like that not only increases the damage of the person doing that, but the more you can spam your special technique, the more you can do your MSM, your Me Mega Spirit Summon, the summoning move, which is the hardest hitting move in the game, I think. So, I think the potential on this card is crazy high. Um, like, next time I pull... I want to pull four stars, but I also kind of secretly want dupes of it's the little things so I can test out just how powerful it is, but I'm going to work on this card next. I'm, when I start like maining Duran, who I'm working on right now, not maining, Reese is my girl, Reese is my girl. I'm not betraying you, Reese. But when I start playing Duran a little bit more, I'm going to give him this and just spam his special move. I think it's really good. So that's my top 10 list for two star and three star cards in this game. Um, unfortunately, Luker kind of holding me back from testing out every card so far so this is a little bit based on theory but again i tried to look at generically good cards that i think uh, you won't regret investing in let me know what you think if you have cards that you've been using with a lot of success let us know in the comments section so people can read that and uh learn from your experience thanks for watching everybody i'll catch you next time peace like and subscribe i always forget to mention that like and subscribe oh my god